Hello everybody, I am Conquering History Games and welcome back to part 12 of my Democratic Comey campaign. Now, you're probably already saying to yourself, wait a second, the calendar's gone back. Okay, so I have no idea what caused this, but for some reason the save file on part 11 broke um, in a strange way. Definitely some sort of bug happened. Uh, Hold on, yeah, so what we're just going to be doing, I'll explain it, let me, let me just say we're just going to start slamming our way back towards uh, October 1966, and it's actually entirely possible that I might just do some cuts uh, to save you guys time, but let me just first explain what happened. So I tried to open up the save file for the end of part 11, and, uh, okay, hold on, appeal to force, rousing speech, I'm not going to read all this stuff again, <laughs> sorry for anybody who was, uh, who was waiting to see that. Uh... All right, we're gonna go to the decisions tab, but uh, just campaign wherever we're we're gonna sweep. We're gonna sweep so hard. Um, yeah. Um, so yeah, I went to the end of the part eleven uh, start. You know that save file, and it still said that I was Comey when I opened it up, and I thought, well, that looks weird. Uh, then I would go to the uh, the national focus tree over here, and it would have the uh, there's the military government collapsing, and it had the original Comey uh, focus tree that we had way at the beginning of the game. So like we had to make the 1962 budget again and stuff like that. So that was really weird. Also, there was no leader portrait, and when I kind of looked around a little bit, there were no leader portraits. Uh, basically, the entire world went communist, uh, it looked like, from what I was seeing, that everybody was authoritarian socialists. Uh, and, and the way I noticed it, because I zoomed out and I said, what the heck is going on here? And then I saw that it said Japanese commune. But then I would go and I would click and there wouldn't be any portraits there. Um... And then, like the you know the the there was different leaders in Russia because of that and stuff like that. Okay, cool. We won as was expected. What were we gonna do? We did the economy first. Uh, so let's do that again. And uh, yeah, let's let's just keep moving. So I kind of wonder if I should actually uh, show that you know I've been playing this so that you guys don't think I cheated in between or something. Uh, oh, Long Young got eaten, that's right. No more Yunyuns down there. Uh, but uh, really, if if this ends up being the end of the series, I guess I'm kind of okay with it. It sucks that we didn't get the full unification, but it's pretty clear that I'm on the road to victory. Uh, like, West Russia is so strong. You get so many factories and stuff when you unite it all. Like, like, like let's just for comparison... So central central Siberia, or excuse me, Western Siberia has unified, and they've got fifty seven factories. That's less than me. Actually, that's quite a lot. Did they rebalance this? These guys have twenty nine. Okay, I guess it's only if you're in East Russia that you're having some difficulties with those sorts of things. Uh, but Chita's about to unify. Um, <clears throat> but I certainly think that we have the biggest base of uh, recruitable population. No, that's deployed manpower. We're looking for it. So let's see. In terms of what they have in reserve, the military district has 166,000. The Central Siberians only have 16,000. Cheetah has zero, although admittedly they have not unified yet. So, end of election season. We're done. We won. We're awesome. Keep moving along here. Get the political power. And, uh, yeah, we'll start making our way towards the sovereign future again. And what else was I going to do? Last democracies of Europe. Are there even any democracies in Europe? Wait, they had a new way to, to filter that sort of stuff, right? Yeah, ideology. Mm, I get the sense that uh, there's not really that many. Okay, so there's... Like Switzerland and stuff. Uh, Switzerland, Bosnia, England. Those are all democracies. Uh, Iberia's despotism. Yeah. Um, what do we got here? Poland's authoritarian democratic. That's the closest thing. Uh, these guys are social democracies up here. But very, very little. Very little in Europe that's actually democratic. Ah! 
in my head. Itchy head. Um, let's keep working. Oh, no, 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 no. 717 days? I don't think so. This isn't the United States where, you know, in the New Order, who gives a damn about the research? Okay, to write a speech. What, what was it? We were going to empower the nationalists, I think, right? Yeah. Keep going. Of course, we really... Yeah, I don't think I need to make a cut. We could just keep slamming through this since, uh... Since, since you know, we're skipping the events because we've already read them before. Chita unifies the Russian Far East, as they do. Okay. Now, can we deploy these guys yet? Sort of. One of them, anyway. Get rid of that. Okay. From Oblast to Nation, the Iron Governor stuff. Okay, you're training, you're training. Let's get some more of you training. Out here. We got time before the war. You know, in hindsight, I should do this the other way. Yeah, do that, and then that, and then bring these over. Oop, I'm gonna take a minute to reassign. Yep, there we go. And have you all train. Great. And then we just take them out as they finish training. Like, this guy's going to finish very quickly. See? So we do that. Mm-hmm. Great. Merge under strength and damage units. Consolidated units. Experience is kept. Manpower and equipment is added together. Is that new? I don't remember that. It's probably been around for ages and I just haven't noticed. Uh, the weak suffer what they must. I think we're done with land doctrine here. Okay, uh, we wanted to accept the big tent model because we're not going to carry water for the other parties. Uh, oh, can you actually do both of these? Is this not a mutually exclusive thing? Mm, is that how that works? I guess so. Yeah, it doesn't have the mutually exclusive thing. Well, I didn't notice that before. Okay. Probably can hear the jingling. Dryer's done. Okay. Poverty relief programs are good. No longer getting the effects of the military austerity. We're going to keep doing that because we're not going to be at war for like two and a half more years. Um, anything else that I want to do here? Stability? No. We're going to get that bonus back later. Academic base. Um, current political thought? No. Never! Uh, which which is the research facilities again? Like, I don't know. We got, we got a lot of stuff already going on. We're getting a lot of bonuses already increased. It's slow, but I don't know if it accelerates it or not. Okay, hold on. Let's see. Right now we're getting 2.0 on our academic base growth. So if we did the academic base thing, active for 30 days, center of politics. All right, so now when I check, we're getting still 2.0. So I just wasted that, basically. <sighs> Justice before compromise. Let's, we just need to get rid of this overextended administration. I'm really glad that I just wasted 50 political power. Hmm. Now, how are we doing in terms of tanks? I've got enough. Great. Uh, these are, in fact, 20 widths. Uh huh. Got my motorized recon here. Good, 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 good. So then, let's lower their production of, uh, of some of this stuff. Hmm. Oh, oh, oh. What's happening? No, no, no. Why do I have two basic main battle tanks? I, I shouldn't do this because uh, I'm going to lose the production efficiency, unfortunately. But <sighs> let's get rid of that. And then do this. Wait, no. Hmm, we're not building any fighters or casts. So we could do that. There we go. And then everybody else starts coming in here. Peace in Vietnam. 
I'm gonna deselect all of this. Nice, we got our better industrial expertise. Okay. There we go. Sovereign Rush is on its way, and it's lotion time. Dry, dry hands. <sighs> it's early in the morning when I'm recording this, real early. Um, like, it wasn't even five when I started. I don't know what time it is now, but I was up early. I think it's just my life now, it's just getting up early. And then try to nap later, which I pretty much never do, even though I keep telling myself I will. It's like that pro CD video where he's talking about, wait, Konensberg. Uh, let's see, official recognition of the Polish as a people by Germany. Wow. Well, I guess good for Poland. They're not going to get killed by Spear. He truly is a reformer. Yeah, again, we're wanting to keep a little bit of an eye on what's going on over here. What he's up to. <laughs> Finishing touches back in the west. Do an eastern commission. Send the materials. The thorn in our side. That's the Poland thing, right? Okay, there's where Stalin is threatening the advisor. Okay. I might make today's episode a little bit longer than usual. Just to kind of make up for, uh, make up for, for, you know, the, having to redo a lot of this stuff. Okay. That's all done. What's the decision that's available to us now? Yeah, we're going to do, so we we're going to do pass wrongs, campaign against discrimination. Uh, is there anything else? Shining precedent unlocks decision to exert influence in the Southern Urals. Yep. Although I probably should be doing this educated populist stuff. Yeah, oh, these are really strong bonuses over here. But that overextended administration, oh, it's so bad, baby. Hmm. Okay, you need to be gathering intel out here. Speaking of which, let's check the, uh, this. It's going to take 960 days. Let's see if we can set something up to do that faster. Oh, I could become a spy master, but I need another apartment open. Let's do economic. Okay, and then we can have a second person to help us gather intel. Discontent in the PSD, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Let's uh, let's grab this educated populist stuff. Even though I really hate the overextended administration, uh, increasing. You know, my academic bases and things like that will be very good. Uh, simple luxury like education seems to be unattainable. Nothing will signify Russia's slow but sure return to normalcy more than the masses of children filling classrooms for the first time in a generation. So we'll do educational deferment, which will lower our recruitable population, but that's fine. We've got plenty of others. Got to think about the future. All right. Land doctrine stuff's getting researched. Um, I guess let's increase the like breakthrough and stuff of our tanks. Let's kind of start going in on that. Now, uh, the progressives are going to start getting noticeably stronger uh, within our party. So we'll have to keep an eye on that. Yeah, the nationalist swing right now is a little uh, marginalized. Okay, standardize the schools. Uh, we need to improve education. Curricula and education standards vary enormously across schools, across the, between schools across the republic, as distance, inequality of resources, and a lack of communication between localities drive them further apart. I'm sorry, is the music off? Yes, it is, sorry. <laughs> schools that do not adequately educate their students are scarcely better than schools at all, and the potential is great for a wide skill gap to develop between various regions of the country. Many of these problems stem from the lack of a widely penetrating central bureaucracy. The government can do a far better job at setting and enforcing standards than the disparate array of local educational arrangements that exist currently. And it must, if the republic's less advantaged, children are to get a better lot in life. Mm hmm. All right. 
concurrent uh, frontal assaults. Orgloss moving minus 25%, so it gets worse when they're moving? It's probably supposed to be the other way where you get a. I don't know, maybe it's just red. I don't know. Uh, that might not be entirely correct. Okay, now we can become. Wait, no, not quite. A few more days. And then we can uh, become a spy master. Oh, except I'm not in a faction. I have to found one. Mm, all right. Uh, affirmative action is going to lower our daily political power gain. So let's wait on that. Generation of engineers. This will help industry and research facilities. Yeah, so then I could definitely stop taking all of this stuff down there. But look at that. We're mostly unified and we're ideologically centrist. Excellent. Radical centrism, baby. That's what Comey's all about. Okay, build some more intel, please. Out here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That'll work for me. Um, what else could we do? We can improve workers' training. Wait, what's the progressive programs or whatever the heck? Or propaganda programs? Okay, these are just things I didn't deselect. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Oh, gosh, I need to go blow my nose. Hold on. Be right back. Okay, I'm back. Uh, so where, what was going on? Oh, yeah, yeah, Russia. Hmm. What's going on? Uh, okay, still a little bit too early on that rifle. We could research anti-air equipment, but Air Force isn't really much of a thing out in Russia. Uh, maybe basic motorized equipment to increase the hardness over here. Oh, the caucuses are looking messy. Reichsland Volga. Awesome. Okay, we got all of our education stuff set up. That's going to be really good in the long term. Now, let's get com campaigning against discrimination. It'll make us more popular in regions with large minority populations, less popular in regions with large right-wing sympathies. Now... I think this is all considered Russian culture, though. So I'm not sure how we exactly know which areas are minorities and which ones are not. Um, oh, good. The whole army's done training. Excellent. Hold on. I'm missing somebody somewhere. Yeah, what's going on here? Don't have enough manpower equipment. Let's make it a high equipment priority just so we can get it cranked out. Uh, but let's see here. Yeah. Everywhere we look, the culture is Russian. It's so, like, how do we check who's the minorities? Would it be areas like here? Karelian. Hmm. I don't know. Over here, yep. Yeah. Is this... Oh, it's Sammy. Nice. Um, German hegemony returns. At the beginning of the Great Civil War that ripped the Reich apart, many of the Reichs commissioned in the Eek broke free of Germania due either to internal revolt or to the fact that the Reichskommissar was loyal to one of the defeated opponents to the new Fuhrer. After the Burger Krieg ended, the weakened German nation was too devastated to even consider foreign expansion for a time it seemed that the Svastika would ever return to the bloody fields of Eastern Europe. Today, however, marks a new beginning for the Reich. After a series of both military campaigns and diplomatic efforts, most of the former Reichskommissarate have returned to the fold of the newborn Reich. As the world looks in both awe and worry, one thing is certain. German hegemony has returned. It seems the Reich has returned to the world stage. So, Spear... Yeah, Spear did it. Although, he's not going to get England back. <laughs> he probably doesn't even care. Uh, what is this? State welfare programs? No, 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 no. Okay. Oh, I can take all of these. Fascinating. Uh, well, I think I want total service equality because that's the one that's going to actually decrease administrative strain, although it's going to hurt my stability. Uh, yeah, Charter of Universal Rights for sure. It is not enough to pass a few rules granting citizens legal rights. We must also codify it into our constitution. The great democracies of the world have unassailable provisions that protect their people, and so will we. And thus we bring forth an equal rights amendment. 
Modeled after the Bill of Rights in America, we will make an egalitarian nation that grants everyone equal rights a permanent feature of Russia, and that is going to be hard for any would-be authoritarian to roll back. I get the sense of what they're saying, but it's like a single amendment based on the entire Bill of Rights. That's going to be an enormous amendment. It's going to be pages and pages long. Uh, th then again, you know, it's just one of those things like a single amendment can have multiple things. Heck, the First Amendment of the United States. In fact, let me pull up the exact language because I don't want to get it wrong. But but uh, the freaking First Amendment has several clauses within it. So it guarantees... Wait, I'm going to try off the top of my head before I even look. Uh, it, it guarantees freedom of speech, press, religion, assembly, and government petition. Now, let me go check that. First Amendment... Constitution, USA. Okay. Uh, okay, so this is this is the text. Official text is Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion, of prohibiting the free exercise thereof, or abridging the freedom of speech, or of the press, or of the right of the people to peacefully assembly or assembly assemble or to petition the government for a redress of grievances nice i should hope i remember something that simple <laughs> let's see here good old u.s history i had a lot of great history teachers over the years as i'm sure you can imagine given um given how much i you know, I'm so passionate about it. I hope that I can get this uh, social studies teacher job and I could be one of those uh, great teachers. All right, United Russia. I don't know if we're going to be able to go back here. I hope we can. Uh, so, Russia is still geographically torn asunder. Wait a minute, I got empty civilian factories. Or, civilian factories, they're not doing anything. That's what I meant to say. Uh, yeah, let's come down here. Keep building more military ones. Um, we have some operations that we could do. We could infiltrate the army. Could be fun. Let's do it for fun. Commence when ready. And speaking of which, let's do that. Okay. Uh, but yeah, I remember there was this one... Uh, Mrs. Uh, well, actually, I shouldn't say her name. That's how you get docs. But she was uh, my eighth grade social studies teacher. I remember she had this thing where she hated gum chewing, though. And uh, so if she caught you in your class chewing gum, uh, you would have to. Uh, she had a scraper, and you had to get on your like hands and knees, and you'd have to scrape clean the gum from underneath five desks in the class. <laughs> the problem was I had a bad gum chewing habit. So I scraped a lot of gum, and eventually, all the gum was gone in the whole uh, in the whole classroom. There was no more gum under any desks, and so then she just went, mm, and she just hands me a broom, sweep up the class. <laughs> so I'm sweeping while she's lecturing. Uh, on the race for the Urals, uh, the Urals represent both an opportunity as well as a threat to our nation. Seizing the area's resources and population would be a great boon to our cause. However, on the far side of the Ural, another unifier state claims its legitimacy as the true Russian government. Were this opponent to capture the Urals, they would be able to station troops on our side of the mountain range, threatening our eastern provinces. We must thus assert our prominence in the region through any means necessary. So, that's basically what's going on. Because, yeah, everywhere here, it's just mountain, 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 mountain. All the way up. Uh, and then it's a lot of mountain down here as well. But, like, right here, it's just tundra. Or just plains, yeah, so... Basically, whoever gets it has a, has a back door. Can go around the Maginot, as it were. But anyway, she was a really great uh, teacher. Um, and I remember... Hold on a sec. Do I want to do this? Honor the Republic's heroes. Should we do that? Um, hold on. Let, let, let me review how this thing works. Because I want to try and negotiate them in if we can. After all, we are a democracy. Um, Southern Urals is a region that thanks to its isolation has escaped the efforts of various unifying forces to unite the Russian state. This, however, is not a state of affairs that can last if Russia is to be truly restored. Gaining influence over the Ural warlords and preventing our eastern opponents from establishing a sphere of influence in the region is necessary. So we can increase our investment. Uh, I don't think this costs me political power, so yeah, let's just do that. 
Um, we're going to have to do... Let's see, how, how far behind am I in infantry equipment? 201 days. How's that administrative strain going? It's really not so bad these days. Minus 7% political power gain. Remo oh, coming over here, this will remove the strain. Uh, so basically, do I want to directly increase my popularity? Or... Don't want to survey Republic elections. I guess let's survey the Republic elections so the Nationalist Wing could be a bit empowered because because uh, we went to the left on the other issue. And then, yeah, we'll just then be completely done with the administrative strain. But after that, it's industry time. We stand for many things. Um, for freedom and democracy, sure, but for moderation above all. The people of Russia do not need radical and extreme solutions for their problems. Demagogues have destroyed their country, and they do not wish for another one. They want sensible and reasonable solutions that don't affect their lives any more than necessary. The PSD is at the center of politics and abhors extremism in all forms. Democracy and moderation is our guiding principle, and we will draw a hard line against anyone who goes against it. Extreme moderates, as I've said. Uh, okay. Let's come down here. Oh, wait, no. Uh, race for the Urals, this is it. So, yeah, let's just keep increasing our investment in these areas. Once we have 100 influence with them, we can, uh, we can add them to the sphere, but I think it looks like the Euro, the, the military district rushed it. Uh, so I don't think we're going to be able to catch them in time. Anyway, so yeah, a couple. One of the interesting things that I remember that that my eighth grade social studies teacher did is uh, if we had been good that week, we also could slowly work our way through roots. Uh, so I don't remember exactly how long each class was. I think it was like an hour and a half. But if we had been good all week on Friday in the second half of the class, we would throw. She would throw on roots. Uh, so we, we slowly, over the course of an entire uh, you know year or however long it was, we made our way through. It didn't take a whole year, but y you know what I'm saying. Uh, let's see. Discredit. Uh, yeah. Let's do that. Bring them down. Bring them down. Uh, the center can hold this time. His pleas had been in vain. Conversation about democracy. Uh, let's see here. The first to approach the improvised booth he'd set up was a pensioner, a lady in her 60s, clutching a handbag. Valerie helped her into the seat opposite his as she snarled at him. Get out of my district, reactionary. This place isn't for your type, and it never will be. Valerie simply smiled, drawing his secret weapon from his bag. A flask of tea, chilled and thoroughly soared. Reactionary, that's an interesting word to use, ma'am. I'd like to hear more about what you have to say about us. And if I'm not wrong, you stay on Petrov Street, don't you? Our representatives have never been to the area. Uh, so... Talk about democratic ideals and stuff. Okay. Keep tabs on this one. Arrest if suspicious activity is found. What? Organized secondary appeal. Potential supporter. My God! Oh, we are not going to do that. We're going to go progressive on that. So it's like we're, you know, we're looking. Yeah, come with me and talk about your grievances, so I can find out if I want to arrest you or not. No, 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 no. We're not being our father here. So, organized secondary appeal, potential supporter, and that because that's how you get the voters. You got to hit them again and again. Actually, something I thought was interesting. Um, I learned about this when I was younger. Is that if you want to get somebody to vote, you have to like engage them six times on average and that could be like meaning reminding them to vote that's why it's really useful to if you're trying to get a, a neighborhood to vote you do the um hold on a second uh yeah we're not going to tolerate election fraud uh so you do things like uh you know you, you you give them the door hanger you leave one of those on their front door you give them a refrigerator magnet or something so that they'll see it every day and they remember to vote of course, if you want them to vote for somebody specific, that's when it gets harder. <laughs> uh, you're gonna, you need different sorts of appeals than just like a reminder. Uh, but yeah, I definitely had some interesting. How did I get on the subject of teachers? Oh, we were talking about the education, I think, uh, in in the schools. Yeah, I remember uh, one that one of my teachers that always really stuck out to me was my junior year. He was funny. He would. Uh, 
he would play songs at uh, the start of certain sections of, um, you know, the semester. Hold on a sec. Uh, why can't we increase... It says that we've invested the max amount, and yet we're not at 100. Discrediting the opponent. Uh, oh, is it just like... Oh, we just have to wait for the influence to gain right now. So... So yeah, uh, uh, so he would play a related song, even if it wasn't really related to uh, to the section of history that we were going to be studying for like the, that part of the year or whatever. So when we were going into the World War One part of the class, uh, he played the song by the band called Franz Ferdinand, and the song is called "Take Me Out." <laughs> it has nothing to do with with uh, you know the actual Franz Ferdinand or anything. Uh, but it was it was just so funny because then he the, the song finished playing he says so remember when any, everybody talks about the tragedy of Franz Ferdinand being killed he asked for it he said take me out it's just all we just listened to a four minute song for that pun or wordplay thing <laughs> all right let's work on our uh, poverty rate no room for corruption. Uh, no longer. Corruption will be eliminated in Russia. Massive fines await those who seek to use their positions to profit from the people, and there will be no exceptions or tolerance at all. Okay. Uh, we can increase our relations with them. Do we need to do that? Our relations cannot be further increased. Yeah, yeah, yeah. let's do that. Let's increase the relations, increase the relations. Uh-huh. Hmm. It looks like we're winning in Orenburg, but we're having some troubles in the Euro League. Let's get this training. All right. Huh. We can launch a military intervention. 75 days from now, we'll declare war on them both. I shouldn't do that. Uh, let's see, we're at 2.8 on the infantry equipment. Just a few more months to go. Now, you know, we might do the... We could perhaps do the uh, military intervention just to trigger the war early. What is this enough? Yekaterina fainted headlong onto her desk. It was sudden. The sound echoed. The typewriter beneath her fingers spasmed. The letter spilling off the page and it went silent. Uh, Nikolai flinched, but very b barely. What? Okay. 20 uninterrupted hours of work. It was a wonder she wasn't in a coma, so that's why she fainted. Oh, goodness. Uh, okay. Tax fraud investigation. West Russian Free Republic citizen K98133-21D named Dmitry Androvic. Gonacharov suspected violations, misuse of campaign funds to the sum of two million rubles. Da Damn, his head was spinning, cursing at the error. Nikolai went to fetch some more tea. This corruption investigation was hell on earth, but Nero was the most capable brewer he'd ever known. Maybe she'd even flirt back this time. <laughs> so, corruption purged, influence invoice by invoice, through sufficient errors, a pattern emerged. Hmm. So, do I want to increase my popularity in exchange for stability, or do I want stability and lose political power? Uh, let's see. Our stability has been taking a bit of a hit as time has gone on. Uh, let's get some stability back. Corruption purged, invoice by invoice. Hmm. Uh, I'm trying to remember other songs that that guy would put that, that that guy that teacher would play like he did uh he did cortez the killer when we went into mesoamerica because he was a uh, into the mesoamerica section because he was a neil young fan which i am too uh all right um decreasing investment no 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 yeah i think we're slowly catching up in the euro league but i just don't know if we're going to be able to get there in time there goes whales they never win ok 
Okay. Trying to decrease their influence, but they're probably doing the same to me. 15 and 15. Gosh, this is going to take forever. Well, we've got time to kill, I guess. Now, industry time. Also, wait, let's check our party unity. How, the, how is all that going? Uh, marginally left-leaning, we're mostly unified. Let's reinforce that a bit. It's, uh, it's getting a little low for my liking. Hmm. Increase the popularity with industrial workers. Roads across Russia. Hmm. Industry research bonuses. I like that. There we go. But yeah, my, my junior year history teacher, definitely the one that sp uh, uh, sticks out the most. And then senior year, I didn't have history, believe it or not. Um, it wasn't a requirement. Uh, you only had to do like three years of history, and not or social studies, I should say, in high school, at least where I went. Um, although they had changed... They had changed things after my freshman year, and that's a whole long story. But, but uh, yeah, my, my freshman year of high school, uh, we did geography. It was, and uh, and then there was like a smattering of some other social science stuff in there. So like we studied, we studied world religions in the geography class. <laughs> but uh, then there was uh, hold on a sec, launch military investment. Our influence is just jumping all over the place. But we are definitively in the lead. Hold on. Increase relations. Increase relations. Yeah. What is going on? Like, our current influence, were we in, like, the 40s, and then it just went down to the twos or whatever? I don't get it. Uh... And then, and then, uh, sophomore year you do world history, and then junior year you do U.S. history. Um, and in case you're thinking like, well, why do you do U.S. history so late if you if you live in the United States? Well, it's because you do U.S. history every other year of school before high school, so it's just constantly U.S. history. So really, by the time you get to your junior year, it's just like, okay, we're gonna go into a bit more detail about some of these things, but you pretty much already know them. So it's a refresher more than anything. Uh, state development or foreign investment? Uh, this increases GDP growth directly. This reduces interest rates. Uh, both are going to help the poverty rate. I guess it doesn't really matter. Okay, so who's the weaker party right now? Or who's the weaker half of the party right now? Uh, the nationalists. So yeah, let's strengthen them and go invite foreign investment. We are starved of capital and the international business wants new markets. Should be pretty easy. We'll just say, we have oil and everybody's just stampeding into Russia. Just, oh, give me the oil. Give it to me. Anyway. All right. Hmm. Uh, but then senior year, you don't have, uh, you do not have, uh, any history classes you have to take, at least not that I remember. I ended up, this is gonna sound weird and it's a whole thing, but I kinda sorta, quote-unquote, audited a, a class in high school that was, uh, basically I was supposed to be signed up for it, it was just in a, it was just like, it was, it was something where you could take the class and you can get, it was like an advanced placement class where you could, uh, you know, they would teach you the stuff that would be on the advanced placement test so you can get some college credit. And I was supposed to be registered for it and then they screwed up and didn't put me in there. Uh, and so I would just go to that class anyway. It was this comparative political systems one, so that was really interesting. Um, terrific, terrific teacher. Uh, let's see. Territory of Russia is rich in natural resources, oil, minerals, and crops, etc. So we're going to get resource excavation. We'll get some chromium, tungsten, and oil. Most excellent. Uh, wait, we're looking for the... Where's the trade thing? Yep, that's what I was afraid of. We're trading for stuff we don't need. There we go. only thing we're importing is a little bit of rubber. Nice. Uh... Yeah, so like the comparative uh, political systems, we would study different political systems around the world. So of course we started with a quick review of the United States, but then there was a. Uh, then we studied the the United Kingdom's system. Uh, there was. 
We looked into the Soviet Union. And I remember he showed this documentary. I think it was called Sex in the Soviet Union. Uh, and it was about... It was just about, like, this sexual revolution that happened in, in Russia and, in, like, in the former Soviet states after uh, the, fall, the, the fall of the Soviet Union. And at first it starts out with people who are like, you know, yeah, we just party, we just go out. And why, why is it German? I don't know why I did that. But it's like, uh, we just go out and we party. Um, and, and then, and then, and, and this is, and this documentary I think was made like in the 90s. Uh, and, and so, and so like the interviewer is saying is like, do you guys use condoms? And then one goes like, yeah, I'm just going to decide for some reason, this is a German immigrant living in Russia. It's like, yeah, you could, you could wear a, a, um, a condom while you have sex you could also wear a gas mask to smell a flower uh, it's just like oh my god that is not that is not good that is not good uh and uh and then sure enough by the end of the documentary it's talking about how like hiv was just starting to rampage through the the, the nation uh oh we're gonna get a lot of military factories out of this when we consolidate the defense industry and like they interviewed the first guy with aids uh in russia and they freaking um and like i think he died between when they had filmed and when the documentary had come out uh and uh yeah it was just all this weird interesting stuff like there was this it was showing like these rural russians who never got sex education and how like sometimes they'd be five months pregnant without knowing it uh let's see here uh, the Reich has decided to reorganize into Reichsstalters. A native, no, a native Reichsstalter aided by the government mostly of their choosing shall oversee a civilian administration. It's a better administration compared to the excesses perpetrated by some of the old Reichskommissars. This will probably mitigate the worst effects of German domination, but it will do little to quench the burning hate the natives feel for their overlords. Take the old system and use a new name. Voila. Yep, Rusland has been recreated. You see, this would be... Oh, man. Guys, can you... Why can't we invade Russia yet once... Or invade, invade you know, take back at least Moscow once... Uh, you know, once you... No, actually, no, not the MPs. I just wish we could do that. You know, once we hit... Um, unified Russia that we could go after Germany because then this would be a heck of a challenge because now Moscow is not isolated Germany has been reformed they're out here in the Caucasus again and stuff so this would be like a serious challenge long-term final boss battle you know but can't do it yet unfortunately uh, should we keep working on the industry at Z Paramount unlocks decision to exert influence on the sun girls but we're already doing that so let us aid the industrial center. Um, increase relations. Oh, cool. We can add Orenburg to the sphere now. Nice. Uh, decrease opponent relations. Good, 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 good. Awesome. So do we have, like, like they're a puppet now, I think, if we look here. Or, yeah, yeah, here we go. Orenburg is a reliant state of a foreign power. Excellent. Because that's us. Okay, so the extra long episode, I think that's it for today. Nice, we also have a profit of uh, infantry equipment. Our AK-47s are starting to come off the line and get stockpiled up again. So we can go ahead, I think, and uh, get a few more... Get a few more... Um, divisions out so we can cover the border with the Euro League. But I'm Conquering History Games. Thank you very much and uh, for joining me, and I'll see you in the next one.